What's up, friends? This is Manny, and welcome to the autopilot in combination with Ardent Spear on the new Dagon robot, an unstoppable enemy that can even one on one Newton Titans no problem, okay? Uh, anything that enters 500 meters range instantly dies because of the increased fire rate of Otto uh, with plasma weapons and all the other skills, obviously, with a nuclear amplifier boosting damage and so on. Welcome to Springfield, all right? This is the first one out of many upcoming matches. Again, this is a massive gameplay compilation with the best action moments because I'm trying to provide a video quality that was unheard of in War Robots before. Let's see how you guys feel about it and what you think about this match. Let's dive in. Uh, just dominate everything because if the word map control has ever fitted uh, was ever fitting to a robot in a particular setup that is it this is the definition of map control right here because anything in a 500 meter radius simply instantly disappears the only thing keeping them alive is shields like the absorber shield that um, like an Ophion has for a while but after that they're gone because they they can't even break through my shields, and even if they would, I still have a really decent amount of health under that shield. Uh, especially due to the, yes, I'm now using the Paladin Battleship, because everybody wanted me to. <laughs> so yeah, ba Paladin Battleship with Durability Extender, and obviously Paladin doing a similar thing, plus the big shield you get. With 300,000 shield energy that comes on top every few seconds. And the cool thing is you never need to stop firing, right? There are other setups I want to test, for example, the spike or the harpoon weapons that give you an added shield. So how much shield energy is this going to be? <laughs> we'll see. Um, but you only have 150 meters range with that. This setup here gives you 500 meters range and a never, never ending firepower with ever having to never having to reload. It's this crazy, seriously. Here, I'm acting the uh, activating the ability to get a little more fast and get out of his blinding zone. Because uh, uh, when you activate the ability on the Dagon robot, you get a bit of a speed boost. It's not much, but it's enough to at least be able to outrun uh, the angler for a few seconds while he is in his ability. Um, and so you don't get the blinding effect onto you. And you see this right there is an Orochi. He's even counter healing the damage, but there's no counter healing this. Six ardent spears with autopilot is basically instant death. Living legend, boom, living legend. And this is just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. Titans are gonna spawn in too, and we're gonna fight them as well. There's another Orochi coming in with his invincibility running his ability, but even with that, he is actually slowly going down, and that is something crazy, because normally they're like untouchable during that ability run. But um, yeah, <laughs> he takes a bit of damage here. Another Orochi is running in the distance, so I switch my target. Why would I waste my time firing into an ability where I can only deal like 1% of my damage? If there are other targets to choose from that deal take 100% of my damage in the meantime, right? Now, however, I know that his ability was offline, and with this much range that Spear offers, I can just drop him real quick. That Raven robot right there gets killed pretty fast. His stealth abilities run out, and that's it. And now the enemies are spawning into their spawn, with the first Titans appearing too. Meanwhile, if you take a look at the top left, we have 514,000 health. Or we had it for a second. I'm taking damage from a battleship, but I think I can heal all of that back. Now we're at 550,000 health with the constant durability extending from the battle battleship of the paladin and so on it is absolutely crazy of course i saw the harpoon lynx coming in from a mile away and i already started going backwards before he even made it in range because i know he would bypass my energy shield and i don't like that all right so and now titans are here two titans are fighting us at the same time the luchador already got killed meanwhile i'm at 580,000 health Another Orokochi is coming in, I'm activa activating my ability for a faster recharge of my shield and boosting its maximum durability as well, thanks to the legendary pilot. Uh, no, wait, sorry, I, let's scratch that last part, I don't have it, I have Otto now, right. <laughs> I forgot for a moment, we're not having uh, the legendary pilot from uh, the Dagon, we have the Otto pilot, and it is much better. That legendary pilot ability from, uh, from the Dagon robot with the increased shield durability it's not really that much different seriously the autopilot however makes a tremendous difference and you're actually going to see this later because there will be the last two matches of this very long compilation without the autopilot so i can show you the difference and you will be amazed to see what an insane difference it literally makes uh, to not have the autopilot uh, equipped with these weapons 
the, it, it really with the nerf that the spear has gotten look we easily got 9 million damage to, uh, very quickly and the match was over after this and with the with the nerf that the Arden spear has gotten they are really really effective only with the autopilot now without the autopilot they're relatively okay and mediocre maybe even but with that pilot they become an absolute monster again so right now you can still run the Capri with four of those but six of those on the Dagon is a different level now um, that is 50% more firepower and uh, it's like a constant running overpower ability from the crisis robot for example uh, or, or something like this right so I see there's a number of um, uh, crisis reapers over there and of course I am rather afraid of those guys this guy is firing at me but what you can do with the fast mobility of the hovering Dagon and when they start firing you just turn circles because this way a few of their shots actually miss you won't be able to miss all of their shots uh, or dodge all of them and uh, you're still gonna take a lot of damage and when they're lucky they can actually one tap you especially in the beginning of the match when you're not running around with heavily boosted HP um, you can get one shotted from those so be very careful and that's what I played very careful here in the beginning of this match until I knew the crisis reapers are out of the match and there was three of them so <laughs> that was that was a lot of reason to be careful in, in the start here but now uh, we're making it further and uh, the reapers are out of the game however this guy with his harpoon weapons also something I have to be very careful about um, those harpoon things are really really nasty because they go right through the shield and this is also together with shield breaking active modules and legendary pilots providing shield break is why the Orpheon will never carry uh, you know or drive the game into insanity like the Orokochi did before its nerf because the this robot can be countered it can be deleted very quickly actually there are a number of setups that can do it rather easily and although this thing is broken and overpowered with too much firepower and probably too much shielding there is a way to kill it and the Orokochi had li virtually no way of killing it uh, for a long time and even now it's still crazy with the death survivor skill completely a no skill robot here if you get yourself in the wrong spot or you you ignore a reaper crisis setup for example at the wrong time or something like this right it can be that's at the end for you pretty much instantly yeah Mm. We will see another map on Abyss in Free For All because I'm also going to play Free For All with you in just a moment. Uh, again, massive compilation. Everything you could possibly want to see from the Dagon with this particular setup is here with or without Legendary Pilot in Beacon Games in Free For All. I mixed it all in here. Um, and very interesting is that how I dominate the Free For All match until one thing happens. One thing happens that I didn't expect and that ended it and you'll see it also. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this guy, he, he's lagging a bit and he always lags around the corner when I follow him. But you see I basically just hold the fire button down and, and I never stop firing. <laughs> I just keep that button down. I always cycle my shots, I fire in sequence, da 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 right? This way one of the shots drops the shield and the others will already go through the shield afterwards if there are enemies with shields and so on. Um, and, uh, and it's a better way. Also it sounds not so loud. If you fire all six weapons at the same time the sound effect becomes so loud it's almost unbearable at some point. Um, something that Pixonic should kind of fix because there are certain weapons like Skald I think is extremely loud when it's fired many weapons simultaneously um, and uh, and these weapons here too so very loud very annoying maybe something where Pixonic needs to uh, do something about it and I don't know set a maximum uh, volume disregard regardless of how many weapons fire at the same time anyways we're now on moon and uh, ba uh, back into a beacon game and this Orokochi there just used his ability and it's over now so from this moment on he's actually beginning to take the real damage and you see he's pretty much instantly destroyed there he's down to last stand immediately and I'm not sure can we get him Nah, the last stand prevented it, it it's <laughs> this is also you know you have a death survivor on the Orokochi he, he didn't have it, but he should have had it, really. Uh, you have an Orokochi, a super top end meta robot, but somehow you don't have the one pilot skill that makes him twice as good. Why? Anyways, um, you can have that no skill second ability at 50% at no matter what, right? And then with just one last stand or one phase shift, you have a third ability. And without doing anything right or wrong, <laughs> you will have three abilities no matter what, right? And those abilities make you invincible for far too long. So. Even though the Orokochi has been nerfed, I still think it's 
the most broken thing in the game. But now maybe together with the Dagon, because the Dagon is broken, no question about it. But, you know, like I said, at least there's a way to deal with him. Here, I didn't want to fall. I was really angry when this happened. I wanted to stay up on the position, but I went up the ramp, ramp and I had no more contact to the ground, and I just flew and hovered over it and fell on the other side. I wanted to stay up there and uh, keep firing at the spawn. That's why I go there again. But uh, yeah, that was like a detour of 40 seconds to get back here. Because the Dagon obviously doesn't have a jump or something. And it's good that it doesn't have that. It's also good there's no crazy mobi mobility boost that gets him ridiculously fast or something like this. It's not a slow robot, but it's also not particularly fast. It's basically well dialed in the middle when it comes to its mobility. Um, and uh, yo, again, a harpoon setup. Very da dangerous. Uh oh, first lift off by a Newton Titan, and this is when we go in one on one a Newton, right here. And it's not even a one on one, there's a Sharenga at us at the same time. And smart as he is, he's not use giving me a timeout to allow me to recharge my shields from invincibility. No, he's not giving me a timeout. He knows what to not do. Uh, good guy. Uh, but uh, even though it was this two-on-one, I was able to one-tap, no, not one-tap, but one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two even the um, the Newton Titan out of the way. Because the shield recharges so fast on the Dagon that uh, the Newton Tonans actually can't really break through it so easily. And, uh, and that's just insane. Because those are among the most powerful weapons in the game. When they can't break through, you know, what can? So, yeah. It's crazy. Now we're back at 550,000 health. I'm taking damage now because I'm firing into a higher siren or harpy. Um, and they reflect damage back at me. And not a little bit. They re reflect a lot of damage back, actually. But, you know, when you have 550,000 health, you can take it, man. This is more health than most Orokochis have when they spawn in now. Uh, but it uh, doesn't mean I can't get killed very quickly by a jumping s a scorpion and a titan at the same time. That is a lot. A lot of uh, stuff on us. And by the way, guys, if you like the content, you enjoy it, um, you want to, you know, support me in doing more of it, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done it yet. And hit the notification bell so you know the next one coming up. Uh, I already have prepared a video with uh, the... Which one is it? Uh, claw or jaw? Claw, I think. The smaller one. These um, lasers that fire in this little arc. Uh, not ra the rockets that fire in an arc. Uh, trigger a bit of a splash damage and have the rust effect. Uh, you know the ones I mean. Uh, and they, uh, they do a lot of damage. In fact, they have one of the highest clip damages in the game. And I'll, I'll be showing this to you also um, in an upcoming video. But right now, I'm really, if you're asking why are you doing so many videos with Dagon, I'm exploring the possibilities, because for the first time in the history of War Robots, we have more than four weapons on a robot. Six weapons. You could argue that the Ares already had eight, having four built-in weapons and four regular weapons. All right, I'll give you that, but it's still not the same as, as physically equipping six of the weapons you prefer and want on a robot. And this is the first time we have that. So it, le it gives you plenty of options. And you can see with this setup here, it's so crazy. It is so unstoppable. I can just fly into the enemy spawn and go into a four on one. And I can still just kill everything in a matter of seconds and tap him out of the way. One after another, after another, after another. And here, this Titan really surprised me with the amount of damage he did. I did not expect that much damage to come from that. But yeah, I got killed eventually. So um, good to see that there is an end to it. But here, by the way, this is... Uh, see, bomb effect, bomb effect, bomb effect, bomb effect, bomb effect. The Skald is really fun, man. It's not doing as much damage as some other setups do, but uh, the uh, bomb effect frequency is the highest of all the weapons in the game. And you just... You can just bomb effect the crap out of your enemy. Seriously, man. Anyways, here we are in the free-for-all match I introduced to you before, verbally. And now you're seeing this is already number two. All right, here goes number three, an Erebus. Pop immediately destroyed. Already at 33 stacks on the nuclear amp, and the battle has just begun. First, Crisis Reaper getting out of the way. I just, I was just waiting for him to open fire at something. And as soon as he did, I, 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 I balled it, uh, and uh, I went in to get the kill. Because, again, you have to focus what is dangerous to you, right? And a creeper setup, a uh, reaper creeper, is very dangerous to the setup. So whenever there is a chance, I will take it out. Um, and here's an Orokochi coming in. And his ability just ended. And 
I don't think that was a very well leveled Orokochi. He went down too quick and too easily. Uh, but um, it still was an Orokochi, and yeah, it's not really that much of a problem there. But if they run the harpoon weapons, I'm dead. If they, if Orokochis run harpoon weapons and I can't stay out of their range, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. These things are just too crazy. And here comes the end. There's two. Uh, two shell robots and one of them has the harpoon weapons and I didn't see it. I focused the wrong one first. I focused the one first that couldn't deal damage to me. If I had focused him first, stealth number one, yeah, uh, here comes stealth number two and that at a time where he could constantly shield break me and then I'm firing him empty and uh, I lost my, uh, my two weapons already and although I still have technically a lot of sh uh, HP, um, I lost two weapons so I'm uh, basically skipping to the next gameplay phase here. Anyways, now, continuing on, this time we're firing without the autopilot. You see the text, now the autopilot is gone, and you see we're doing a lot less damage. The fire rate is so heavily reduced that it feels really, it feels just like a mediocre setup now. You still have more firepower than most other setups because you have six weapons, but compared to what it was before, there is a day and night difference now. It's crazy. Coming in here, finishing one of those guys off together with my teammate down there. It's an Orokochi against a Lynx, uh, but unfortunately I couldn't keep my Orokochi buddy in the game because of the last stand that protected the Lynx there. Uh, but he made a good uh, good defense here down on the beacon. Um, and uh, yeah, so unfor oh, I, I just realized I didn't capture the beacon. I should have captured the beacon, turned it at least white. I, I failed to do that. I didn't see it in the battle. I thought I got it. When I played this, I thought I turned the beacon at least white. Whoops. <laughs> My apologies, team. Um, but yeah, so let's keep on going. Uh, we're in the enemy spawn, and don't worry. With the amount of kill potential we have here, we can still turn the game to a win. Simply by killing everything that's red. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, it just takes so much longer to deal damage and get kills without the autopilot. It, it feels so sluggish and slow now. We still fire constantly, but things just die so much slower. It's crazy. So much of a difference, really. If you do run magnums or spear, and yeah, I also, I, I know, I heard you guys, you, you want to see some magnums on it as well. Uh, but uh, I, I thought I'm, I'm testing spear first because it's like magnums on steroid because they have 500 meters range and they deal even more damage with the next second and third shot, right? So it, it's really the a, a weapon that allows you a level of map control that you could never have with magnums simply because there isn't the range that supports it. Right, uh, but um, here this thing is crazy. We're already at a living legend, and we're just keeping <laughs> keep going here. Um, and even though enemies are dying like 35% slower right now uh, because the fire rate isn't there to 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 give the higher damage output from the autopilot, these th the rest of the remaining firepower is still enough to just freaking living legend the the, the crap out of the enemy th team here. I have a, a Orion battleship on me, unfortunately, and these things are really dangerous, man. Ever so often, I get hit by Orion battleships and realize how much damage they do. If you're sitting on that pulsating vortex thingy that they put on, dude, this damage you're getting is insane. Of course, you can heal all of it back because it's a battleship damage, but still, if you don't, man, if you die from it, you can't heal any of it back. And these things really deal a lot of damage. I, I can't even put my finger on it how much it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Orion can do like 250,000 damage to you, if you're sitting on that entire uh, vortex throughout the whole time. I don't know the number, but just a, just a wild guess, I would not be surprised if 200 to 250,000 is what you could take from it. Maybe I should have te should test that at some point. Not sure if somebody had a, made a full test of the maximum damage Orion battleship out there. Uh, we're in the game still with 130,000 health and our shield really keeps us in the game for a long time. Look, that hawk never breaks through our shield. Not even with the support of other robots shooting at the same time. That shield is just, it's just freaking boss level. Um, and, and yeah, now we're almost destroyed. Weirdly, we still have all our weapons now. That's a, that's a rare thing. Normally, <laughs> I get, uh, I get down to 30%, two weapons fall off. That's like, that's many gaming, uh, normal, normal, uh, play style there. Um, two more Titans, Seraph and, no, not Seraph, uh, the, uh, Aether and the Muromets. I still like the Muromets, by the way. Um, because the stealth is still something that counters Titans pretty well. 
not all titans and you can have the quantum sensor on it and some people do have it and then you're pretty doomed but for those who don't uh, you can fly up and hit them with a lot of firepower and they can't even retaliate for that time it's a pretty good ability actually but yeah it can be countered it's not a like a guaranteed win button like some other things that we see in the game <laughs> All right, and also, uh, I hope you guys know about the giveaway that we have currently going on, right? Um, 35 people have already been added to the winner list for the, through the TikTok um, uh, short version. Uh, and the remaining 165 winners will be drawn on YouTube here within the next couple of days. So check out the giveaway. If you haven't done it yet, you'll find it on the channel a few days ago. Um, and you'll find that <laughs> the... Uh, uh, yeah, those 200 Dagons, are, uh, or most of them, are still up for grabs. So get get in there, use them. Is that still the same movements? Yeah, seeing that now the pulsating uh, Orion is really just getting me killed. I had a good cover behind that uh, wall, but obviously the battleship didn't really uh, care much for it. And here we come into the, the last match. Uh, it's a free-for-all match on Yamantau. Uh, and it's interesting because we're going to fire... Uh, we're going to kill even Titans with it, but we're not using the autopilot. Like I said, those last two matches were try trying without the pilot and seeing how this goes. Uh, thankfully, I did not get blinded by him. And now we can eliminate him coming out of his ability. He doesn't even have any chance to ever drop through those shields. With Skalt and Scourger and uh, what's the heavy version called? Um, uh, they, they just, they are, they're almost completely in unable to break through powerful shields that regenerate quick. It's sick. Even an Erebus, for example, that doesn't recharge so fast. Uh, with these weapons, you have a hard time getting through. Now, this is free for all, like I said, so it's not about dealing damage, it's about getting the kills. And of course, why should I not fire? I'm firing because I can. And I have uh, no, no reload, so let's keep on going. Try to steal that kill, and it worked! <laughs> Definitely mine. I worked hard for this one, yes. <laughs> no, actually, this guy did all the work, and I just came in and whooped it. Uh, but... Um, still, that's what free fall is all about, and then I took him down afterwards, getting pretty much all the kills. Um, here is a harpoon setup, dangerous, very dangerous, needs to get out of the way very quickly. Thankfully, we were able to do it. And then, by the way, I'm using the Kestrel drone, right? I'm not using the Seeker drone. If I had the Seeker drone, I would be able to see any stealth robot within 350 meters of range. Um, also, by the way, I think it's an overpowered ability for a drone. Um, it shouldn't... Uh, it shouldn't do that. Maybe only at 50 meters or something, but not 350. It's just too much of a power gain for, for one out of four possible abilities provided passively by one drone. Um, but uh, I'm not using this one here. I'm running the Kestrel because I want to stay in the game for as long as possible. And the gray HP heal upon kill together with the regular heal upon kill is just insane. Um, now imagine you had the abilities from uh, the Armadillo drone with resistance on kill with this ability from the Kestrel drone combined. If you could combine those two drones, it would be the most broken thing the world has ever seen, Mecha. Because you could, every, any robot could become an unkillable titan just by getting a few kills. Uh, but it's not the case here, thankfully. But Kestrel is still my way to go. If I want to showcase one particular setup, I typically go with Kestrel. Because with the amount of kills I get, typically with each robot, I will just get so much gray HP restore. And also restoring health past my maximum health that I become almost impossible to kill at some point. Um, and the uh, Armadillo drone provides you resistance, giving you similar... Uh, survivability but remember there are many weapons in the game that go through resistance the corrosion weapons go through resistance uh, and the nuclear amplifiers that most people are running in the meta uh, allow bypassing of resistance um, and titan weapons go all through resistance as well right so in that regard the um, armadillo boost of resistance doesn't do me any good by the way he was able to do damage to me because he had a battleship support that bypasses my shield he marked me for a shield bypass with his battleship, and that's why he would bypass all of my shielding and did direct damage to me and uh, dropped me down to last stand. That surprised me quite a bit. I moved away from him because I couldn't hit him anymore, and now we're firing at a Newton Titan. And every time he shoots, I go a little bit behind cover, and now I can no longer do it, but um, I'm still having him inside, and he's got me inside, and my shield, see, it recharges faster than he can deal damage with his Newton. 
And that really is a crazy thing, man. That really is crazy. Newton stands no chance at dealing damage to us. That's why I say this thing is, a, is able to one-on-one -on -one Newton Titans, no problem. It's when there's another target on you that drops your shield, then you get full damage from the Newton and you lose. But until then, you're fine. Yeah. And... It's also interesting that now you can actually shoot down Aether Titans and Seraphs in the air. There's no reason for you to stop firing at them. In the beginning when they were new, you wouldn't really do any damage to them, but now you can start to deplete their force field resistance thresholds, and at some point, yeah. Interesting, he does more damage than the Newton does with his lasers. I guess the Newton didn't have fully maxed weapons. And this guy clearly does, because man, he drops that entire shield every time he fires and deals some extra damage on top. But it wasn't enough, you got downed eventually. So yeah, we're nearing the end of this video. Um, I'm not sure how long it was. 28 minutes. Is this a 28 minutes video, really? Uh, by the way, I know I uh, by this time with the um, with the compilations I make, the videos are getting so long. Not everybody of you will watch all of them, and don't feel forced to do it, right? Um, but I want to make videos that if you want to see more of it, there is more of it, right? So that you can get, you can go and knock yourself out with the amount of content in per video, uh, and just enjoy, uh, enjoy a setup more if you do like to. And if you uh, only want to peek in and have a little bit of a sneak peek of what this would be, it's also suitable for that. But of course, obviously, the more you watch, the the, um, the more awesome it would be for me. <laughs> Alright, so this Offian is going to eventually lose his shield and that's when we're going to be able to do damage to him. Uh, there is also a Lynx coming in in the distance, but I'm focused on getting that kill now. Again, it's free fall. I don't want to give anybody any kills. Uh, if I could choose, I will take all of them, 100% of every single kill. Not sharing even one of them. It's free fall, that's what it's all about. <laughs> but even though, of course, if we're being honest, there's no way I could ever lose a match like this with 17 kills here. Um, at least not in this stage anymore. People are coming in from various sides, but the shielding is just going to protect me so so well. And yeah, so definitely an unstoppable setup here, but uh, not so much with without the autopilot. With the autopilot, this becomes an absolute no-brainer. You just rush through the map and everything that... You need to imagine, like, uh, on a top-down view, you see the map, and you see the um, this setup, and it runs through the, through the map, and uh, there's a 500-meter range arc around it like the, the the circle yeah of its range anything entering the circle dead that 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 that's basically how you need to imagine this to work because it's <laughs> it's literally what happens crazy but yeah come on man enough with your freaking harpoons oh another stealth gotta be kidding me dude come on i hate these freaking stealths but this is where the freaking seeker drone would really come in handy man those those links would not be a problem with that but yeah, I don't have it. So thanks for watching, have a good one, and catch you in the next video. Manny signing off. Bye-bye.